So people are probably thinking, well, how did you, how are you the co-founder of a company who paid less than the men that work for you? I co-founded Jimmy Choo in 1996 when I was 27 years old and Jimmy sold his shares in 2001 and I continued to build the brand. I was very young when I co-founded Jimmy Choo and obviously I was so focused, I wanted to make beautiful shoes. I had no idea the challenges that I was going to face. I didn't get mentors, I didn't ask people for advice and I think that's particularly a female thing is we think that we're troubling somebody or we're inconvenience, inconveniencing them. And also, I don't feel like I stood up for myself enough. I really should have stood up for myself more. I realized also from being at Jimmy Choo that I was paid less than the men who worked for me. Well, so Jimmy Choo was, we were 50-50 owners of the business and very early on he decided to sell his shares and private equity bought his shares. I had 10 middle-aged white guys and absolutely no diversity and nobody actually going to bat for me. And I think they looked at me as a threat and I feel that they felt that I was someone that they had to control rather than work with. And in the end, it became a culture that I was just um, not proud of. Um, we had to do things like lower the quality of the product to increase margins and I became embarrassed to stand next to the product. So I decided to leave and set up the Tomorrow Melon brand with the focus of building a very, very different culture and the focus of building a female-led culture. So everybody so far that's joined the Tomorrow Melon brand has equity in the business and I'm a big believer in people feeling like owners of the brand. I heard Jeff Bezos speak once and he said, you know, it's like the difference between whether you rent a car or you own the car. If you own the car, you take it to the car wash. And that's how everybody feels in the Tomorrow Melon brand brand and also everybody also has a voice so everyone is allowed to speak up everyone has a place at the table and even the way we sit in the office is very different so at Jimmy Choo you know I used to have the big corner office with two assistants that sat outside like two guard dogs um, and now I sit on the floor with everybody else and anyone can approach me and then we also really think about how we interact with the customer. So in the past, traditional luxury brands were really monologues to themselves. So creative directors would sit in their ivory tower and dictate what they thought the fashion was. And they didn't really care what the customer thought. In fact, they were kind of very disrespectful to the customer's opinion. What I experienced at Jimmy Choo um, was they were so focused on margins and profits, they kept coming to the design and saying, you have to use lower quality leather, you have to use so we can increase margins. So what I do with my new brand is I pay the same factory price as my luxury competitors, whether it's Louboutin, Manolo, Chanel, Dior, um, and I use incredible quality leather. I don't sell through a wholesale channel, which means I'm now not paying department stores rent, which uh, means that they're like 50% less than my luxury competitors. And now we have an open dialogue with our customer, whether it's email or direct message on Instagram. In fact, we just opened a Slack channel for customers to comment um, and we answer them back. And we actually use all that data now in the design process. So if there's requests for something, we'll make it. So this company was founded um, on the basis of um, talking about feminist issues and being feminists. We've picked two things. So equal pay is, decide, is the one we've decided to go for because I think there's just an unconscious bias out there that we need a huge cultural shift. And the other thing we're really concerned about is women's health. Like last year, we sent out RVs giving free mammograms. And what's interesting, the, we've really noticed a spike in our business when we do things like that because it's really authentic to us. The biggest lessons I've pulled are don't be afraid to speak up. It's okay if you fail and you make a mistake because there's always a learning in the failure. And be authentic with your customer. Take the feedback from your customer and give her what she wants.